good morning. So this is a, an 82-year-old male. Um, he has history of uh, bypass surgery, uh, diabetes, and dyslipidemia. Um, he had uh, previous history of PAD, stent placement on the right SFA about three years ago. He was known to have left infrapopliteal uh, disease, but uh, it was asymptomatic. And recently, um, he had trauma uh, to the big toe and developed non-healing ulcer on the left big toe. Um, an angiogram was planned. This was a, a right femoral axis with a crossover uh, to the left uh, femoral. Uh, the uh, iliac and the common femoral SFA had just mild disease. So this is in the infrapopliteal segment. Um, as we can see, there's um, severe stenosis in the anterior tibial and uh, occlusion uh, of the tibioperineal trunk. So the plan um, at, at that time was to wire the anterior tibial and try to see if we can recanalize the tibioperineal trunk as well. This is the rest of the, um, the vessel, the anterior tibial. Um, you can see the communicating uh, artery that shows the perineal. Not much of a posterior tibial is seen. So there's a wire down the anterior tibial, and then this was a, um, uh, a 018 quick cross with a command wire that was able to cross, found the lumen of the tibial perineal trunk, it was able to cross all the way to the segment. And then this is where I got stuck. Uh, the wire would not go uh, any further. It was uh, in the sub uh level here. So I tried different wires um, from floppy, choice PT, um, um, and uh, going to um, a um, stiff CTO wires. And I started getting to the point where there was a dissection. I was worried about losing uh, this area, this axis. Um, after multiple tries with the wires, my choice was to go um, a, a retrograde uh, axis from um, the ankle. I didn't really have much of a, a PT to go work with, so the plan was to go with the perineal. I don't know if there's any other, uh, any other idea or uh, any other wire that you would have tried at this point here. No. So so what I thought about at that time, because I didn't really have much of a, of a posterior tibial, was to go down the anterior tibial with a second wire and cross backward through the uh, perineal instead of accessing the perineal itself. Um, the only problem at this point was that I, I didn't have an anagrade axis. I was, uh, it was a right femoral axis, but I thought I'll give it a try before, you know, as a backup plan, I was going to get, pull the sheath back and get anagrade axis uh, on the left side. So what I did is I passed a choice PT wire with an 014 quick cross. The quick cross actually got to this point and would not go any further. I ran out of length, but the choice PT was able to make the loop and, and go back up. So went all the way down, came back up, um, just about to the occlusion uh, area. And the problem here was there is really no possibility because I didn't have any support catheter. After multiple trials, I was able to form a knuckle in that area and just kept pushing the choice PT and was able to dissect uh, and go through. And then I was able to push the anagrade wire from above into the same dissection plane. 
So I was able to cross uh, in Anna grade. And then I moved on to do a kissing balloon. But there was recoil at the bifurcation, so I ended up um, actually doing a uh, crush stenting, bifurcation stenting with uh, two Zions stents, 4.0 and 3.5. And uh, that was the final uh, angiogram. Um, he healed the big toe um, about almost two months later. And actually, there was, uh, he came back about a year and a half later and uh, to have an intervention on the right side and in the bifurcation looked very good with, uh, with the stenting. Any comments or questions? Or? Well, I, I would say that's a very excellent outcome of this uh, challenging case. Uh, if you have no stump, it's uh, every time pretty uh, difficult to find a way into um, the TPT, and mostly it's subintimal. One option you sh could have had considered here is to prepare the origin of the anterior tibial, uh, tibial with directional azerectomy. And with this, there is an option also to somehow clean the origin of the TPT and to find a better entrance into this occlusion. This would have been my, personally, my primary choice. Instead of stenting? Um, as, as a first step, to clean the origin of the anterior tibial, and with this, you also excise some plaque from the uh, bifurcation, meaning also from the origin of the posterior uh, uh, of the TPT. And sometimes it's then easy to find a way into the remaining true lumen, which lumen. is included. Oh. Oh. So this would have also avoided in um, uh, the need for bifurcation standing, at least. So even if the wire was subentimal from the beginning and the TPT trunk? Yeah, I would have removed this wire, would have cleaned the anterior tibial, also exposing the cutter towards the expected origin of the TPT in order to clean out some material and potentially identify better the, the, the origin, the true origin of the TPT. I see. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you have uh, a distal projection? Uh, because I cannot see the collaterals uh, you used uh, for the uh, recanalization, retrograde recanalization. Oh, at, at the end or before? Yeah. Um, actually, the collateral was still present. Um, unfortunately, I think I cut it off with when I made these slides. Um, but it was still present. You know, they were still maintained. Uh, one, one of the techniques you can use, you know, uh, when you were stuck with the wire and the quick cross in the TP trunk, a lot of times uh, folks escalate with the wire, but they never pull back their quick cross. So they leave the quick cross in the same position and they change wires to try to go, you know, find the lumen. So one of the things you can consider is that to pull it actually back two, three centimeters, not all the way to the popliteal, but pull it a little bit back. And then potentially you could then find another channel to get into the, uh, into the PT or the peroneal. I don't well, know if you did that or not, but you know that's something else. You didn't show it, so I, I'm just saying that's I something. Don't, else to I don't think I did. But what would your wire choice be here? I mean, I you know I think in this situation, the couple things that routinely I would use would be Pilot 200 uh, or a Glide Gold, so 018 Glide Gold from Trumo or the Pilot 200. Those would be probably the the, the high jacketed wires. If I wanted to use a CTO wire to uh, kind of poke through, if I felt I was subintimal, I, you could consider the 250T, which is 018. You can use also one of the coronary CTO wires, you know, going from 12 gram all the way to 21. You know, you can use Confianza, you can use any of those wires. I, I tried the Confianza here, and this is where I started dissecting, and I was worried that I'm going to lose the branch. This is why I thought about going from below instead. No, I think you did a great job. It's fantastic what you did, but, you know, some of you know, you know, if you don't, you know, if you want to just get it in anti grade and not have to go through collaterals, or, you know, those kind of things. Some of these smaller tricks to see if you sure. can get luminal. 
So what's, what's your antiplatelet therapy recommendation here? Six months, 12 months, dual antiplatelets or? He, he already had coronary stent a few months before. He was already on aspirin and Plavix and was okay. continued on. Okay, okay. thanks a okay. lot Thank for you. this great uh, presentation. Uh, Thank you very much. Congratulations.